This video is from chapter number 16, application of Laplace transform from Mr. Alexander and Sadiku's book. And this is on the request of a student. So straight away to the question. The circuit and figure, the switch moves from position A to position B at T is equal to zero. So at before T is equal to zero, this switch is closed as it is here and then at t is equal to zero this moves to position b find it it is the current through the inductor first of all for t less than zero uh, this will be the circuit we are just eliminating this one so this is the circuit and since the circuit is in steady state condition Therefore, the inductor will behave like a short circuit. So, what will be the current through the uh, inductor? We call that current initial current. We refer it as I0. And since the source has I a capital I0, so this whole current will flow through the inductor. Therefore, I0 uh, of the inductor will be equal to capital I0. And now we move to after T. So when after T, the switch now moves to position B. So it will become like this. And now this part is useless. So we can say that this is what is available. Now I have written here a transient period. That means the inductor will not become short circuit. Now the moment the switch is moved to this position, the transient period starts and generally it lasts for about 5 time period of 5 tau. So we are in that region and after 5 tau the circuit becomes steady state and then we can say that the inductor will now behave like a short circuit. But in the transient period this is the circuit. And now to solve this circuit, we have to transform this into S domain. Two things will change. First of all, V0. We know that UT is in time uh, in S domain becomes 1 over S. Now UT is just 1 for T greater than 0. Therefore, V capital V0 can be written as capital V0 UT, UT is 1 and for UT we will write 1 over S therefore this will become V capital 0 divided by S. So our source will change and the inductor will also change. Now inductor has two options, two choices we can take. This is the series connection and this is the parallel connection. Now depending on the circuit, we have to choose one. Now if you look at the circuit, this is more like a series circuit and therefore it is better that we use this series connection. Although if you choose parallel connection, you will get the answer, but it will be slightly difficult to solve. So we will just follow this. So in S domain, our circuit will now become this. The voltage source will become V0S. And this too will come in place of a inductor. And now we can write the KVL equation. We start from here. So negative sign, negative V0S, then ISR, then ISSL, and then because this is minus sign, so and this is a voltage source, so we'll just write it as a voltage source. So minus LI0. And from here, uh, we move I terms here and the, uh, this, these two will move on the right hand side. And I now can be written as Li0 divided by this thing. And similarly, V0S divided by this thing. So this is our equation number one. Okay, now uh, we have to go into the time domain and to go into the time domain, we have to uh, do a couple of things. First of all, uh, 
uh, let's see from here the form Laplace transform form is like this that is s plus a and the inverse will give us e raised to the power minus a t what it means that the s has to be alone now here s is with l here after s is with l so we have to make it alone by dividing by l so if we divide by l this will become like zero r divided by l this l will go so it will become s and similarly here and now we have to now this uh, has two factors at the denominator two terms so we have to separate this and we are just separating first of all we're taking this the second term we're calling it i dash s and we'll by far partial fraction we'll separate these two terms we're supplying the partial fraction and the residue method this whole can be written as constant a divided by s the first uh, item in the denominator plus constant b divided by the second item in the denominator now the residue method says that you can find a by multiplying this whole thing by the denominator of a so multiply by s and then the condition is that this denominator should be put equal to zero so equal to zero and we can now solve this now this s s gets cancelled so v zero over l divided by s plus r over l condition is s is equal to zero so now s is equal to zero so it will be v zero over r l and l gets cancelled so this is the value of a similarly we'll find value of b or b will multiply by the denominator of b so uh, we're multiplying this so these two will get cancelled and the condition will now be this the denominator equal to zero this equal to zero means s is equal to minus r over l so the simplified form will remain like this s will replace by minus r over l and simplifying the answer will be v0 over minus r. So a and b we have found. So our second term will now be uh, for a we we'll write v0 over r from here and for b we we'll write v over r. So this is the second term. Now the complete term that is this one equation one will become this is the uh, first term here and solving this we have got these two terms so this is our equation in proper form and now we can do the uh, inverse laplace transform but we can further simplify uh, from here and that is remove r over l we know for LR, uh, uh, rl circuit the time constant tau is given by l over r now in the book he has written is r over l that is a mistake it has to be l over r and so r over l which is here will be actually one over tau from here l over r is tau so r over l will be one over tau so we'll replace these two with one over tau so one over tau s one over tau and now we can apply the inverse Laplace one is this this will apply here and this third term and the second term anything divided by s is multiplied by ut okay so this will now be i zero and from here we get e raised to the power minus t over tau at our a is 1 over tau so t multiplied by 1 over tau will be minus uh, t over tau v r and uh, this is ut we will not write ut here straight away because they are all 
uh, after zero, so there's no point writing ut. Similarly, here we get v over r and e raised to the power minus t over tau. And uh, we can simplify further uh, to take these two terms with e raised to the power minus t uh, common. So this will be our final answer. And to make sure that we are talking about t greater than zero, we have to write this condition. We could have written ut with all of these, but this is enough to write that t is greater than zero. So I hope you have been able to follow this. Please let me know through your comments, share it with your friends and foe. Thank you.